today I want to teach you how to make an apron. This is a really simple cross back apron and I've tried to make this pattern as universal and adjustable as I possibly can. We are going to start with the supplies that you need and some considerations to take into account when you're using thrifted or upcycle fabrics, which is how I make basically all my aprons. We have a skirt piece, two pockets, because of course you have to have pockets, the front bib, the two straps, and the waist strap, and that's it. This is a really simple pattern. It's really great for beginners, and I'm going to do my best to walk you through everything that you need to know to do this successfully. For supplies, you'll need something to cut your fabric with, either a rotary cutter or sharp shears, a seam ripper for any mistakes, a couple dozen sewing pins, thread, measuring implements, and a straight edge to use for cutting, and then a couple of buttons, half inch or larger. Then the next most important thing is an iron and a place to iron on. And then you'll need a basic sewing machine that does a straight and a zigzag stitch. Before you begin cutting and measuring, please make sure to iron your fabric really well. Anytime you're working with a non-stretch fabric, ironing helps immensely. If you're using a thrifted or upcycle fabric, take a look at it and see if there's any trims that you would like to keep. I want to keep this border piece on a lot of mine, so I'm going to be working around that. I'll put the measurements up on screen here for you for all of the different pieces we're cutting out. I would suggest cutting out your apron or you know the skirt piece first. This is going to be your largest piece that you need and you want to make sure that any of the beautiful patterns or borders are where you want it for the skirt. Then after that, I tend to cut out the waist ties, which on this fabric, I'm going to be using the very long border pieces because they're just about the right size that I need, um, even though I will have to attach a couple of pieces to each other. And you can definitely do that with the waistband and the straps. As you can see here, I added a little section right in the middle to give me the length that I needed. On other aprons, I've done it in two. So this one has a seam right down the middle. That's totally fine. This is an apron. Nobody's going to notice or care. Then after I have my straps cut out, then I move on to cutting out the front bib or, you know, the part that goes over your chest and then the pockets. The pockets you are going to need four pieces because each pocket takes two pieces of fabric. If you think you'll be sewing quite a bit, these quilting rulers are absolutely amazing for any type of sewing. So I have one that is six by 24 that I use a lot and then I have one that is six by 12. These are really helpful for doing square cuts and getting things on grain because if your pieces are not cut on grain you end up with kind of like twisty fabric. If you've ever bought something from the store and the legs kind of twist while you're wearing it that's why they didn't cut it on grain. So here you can see me finishing up cutting out the pocket pieces and then we're going to start prepping all of our fabric for sewing. So this is my skirt piece and then I have the shoulder straps and the waist strap and my pockets and then the front bib. So this is all the pieces all together. It's really not too many. Now we're going to move on to prepping everything over at the iron. So the first thing I'm going to do is my waist strap. This is gonna be your longest piece. Start by creasing it in the middle. So fold it hot dog style if anyone remembers from elementary school and get that crease all the way down. Then you're going to fold in by about half an inch all the way down one side first and turn your iron sideways. Don't go straight down the middle like I just did because then I just undid my middle crease, which was very silly of me. You can see here, I'm turning my iron sideways now. That's what you're supposed to do so that you leave your middle crease. So continue that all the way down that first side. This part is a little bit tedious, but I promise you it is worth it once you get over to the sewing machine and the crease is in place. Once you have that side turned in all the way down, now we're going to fold it in half at that middle crease that we made and fold the bottom part up the same amount. So you see I'm making sure that those meet and I'm gonna do that all the way down this side again. So these creases will hold when we go over to our sewing machine later. Now we're moving on to the shoulder straps. It starts the same way. We're making a 
crease in the middle hot dog style, but instead of only folding it in by that half inch, we are going to fold it in to meet the middle crease and bring it down all the way down the strap the same way. And then the other side, you're gonna bring it to meet the middle again and give it one more good press. So this is our shoulder straps. Now you're going to thread your machine and make up a bobbin in your coordinating color. I'm using this light blue color. Now we're going to grab each shoulder strap and we're going to finish one end on each of them. So this is the shoulder strap. I'm folding it inside out basically and I'm going to sew straight across the end. This is going to give us a finished edge when we turn it back right side out. So here you can see I'm just going straight across and then I will be able to trim those threads off. Definitely suggest trimming threads off as you go just as a general rule and see I can flip it right side out and now I have a finished edge. Then we are going to sew a straight stitch all the way down that open edge just like this and that's one strap ready and just repeat the steps on the second strap. Each strap will have a raw edge and a finished edge. Those raw edges are about to be hidden so don't worry about it. Now grab your front bib pieces, make sure your pattern is going the way that you want it to go, and you're going to lay your strap with the raw edge up. See where I'm putting it at the top of my bib. Put it about a little more than half an inch in from your edge. Do that on each side, and this is going to get enclosed. So I have it right sides up, straps laying on. Now the other side of my bib, the lining is going to go wrong side up over this. So you're creating like a sandwich. Now we're going to pin all the way around. You'll want to pin the straps at the top of the bib up here where I am now, but you don't want to pin them along the sides. Now you'll start at the bottom where that long piece of strap is coming out go all the way up one side, turn the corner, go over your strap. I like to back stitch a couple times on the strap. Go all the way across the top here. There's the other strap, back stitch a couple times, turn the corner, go all the way down. Make sure that you're not catching the side of your strap in this. If you do, just seam rip and do the seam again, it's okay. And then you can see we turn it right sides out and our straps are attached. You want to give this a really good press. Roll these seams in your fingers to really get them to turn out crisply. You can also use kind of a dull pencil and run it along the inside of the seam to get those to turn out. And then give it a really good press. If you press it really well, you're not gonna need to top stitch around this. Now we're gonna move on to the skirt. I do have two raw edges on my skirt. The bottom is finished, because remember I kept this beautiful border, but I need to turn under the sides by a quarter of an inch, and then turn it under again, and then stitch all the way down. So if you have any raw edges, that's what you're gonna do. Turn under by a quarter of an inch and press, like I'm doing here, then turn it under one more time and press and then go stitch it. This is going to keep your raw edges from unraveling. When I'm using thrifted fabrics, I really like to keep as many finished edges from the original product as I possibly can because I really hate hemming things, but sometimes you gotta do it. So I run that up both sides. You can use a slightly longer stitch length here. You can go to like a 3.5 stitch length. The rest of this is done on a 2.5 stitch length. Now I'm going to try to show you how I do my gathering. So I'm going to set my stitch length to the longest, which on my machine is a five stitch length. Leave the tension completely alone, and we are going to hold tension on the top thread with our fingers. So you get your fabric under, you put your needle down, and then up top, this thread, you're just gonna hold it down with your fingers. Not, you know, a death grip or anything, but hold it down with some tension. And then as you start to go, don't backstitch, as you start to go, it's going to gather naturally. 
This is the gathering method that I use 95% of the time because it works the best for me. Make sure that you leave a long length of thread at the beginning and at the end in case you need to adjust your gathers. So this time it gathered a little bit tightly for me and that's fine. This is why we leave that extra length of thread so you can pull it out a little bit. So you can decide how wide you want your skirt. I suggest holding this up to your waist and deciding how far you want that skirt to go around your body. Once you have it to where you want it, take those long threads and tie them in a knot several times. This will keep your gathering from loosening or tightening any more than it already is. Now we're going to attach this to our waist strap. This is by far the trickiest part of this. So just go slowly and take your time. I'm marking the middle of my waist strap with a pen so that I can place that middle of the waist strap to the middle of my skirt. So mark the middle of both and match them up. Now we're going to open up our waist strap and start tucking this inside to hide our raw edges. This is where it can get a little bit tricky. So again, just go slow, use a lot of pens. So I basically tuck it up to match that half inch that I've turned under there. So you can see I'm matching that up and then I tuck it inside and then pin it. And you wanna make sure reach underneath and make sure that you, the pen is catching all of the layers of the fabric all the way to the back. Taking your time with this penning step and using lots of pens is the key to making this go smoothly once you're over at your machine. So I work from the center out to one side and then I work from the center out to the other side. But make your pens all point the same way so that when you go to your machine you're not poking yourself constantly. So here is mine all pinned and I'm gonna show you what that looks like on the back. So you can see my pens have caught all the way to the back. You wanna make sure that it has done that in every single spot. Now we're going to take it over to our machine and start at the edge of the skirt. I used to start at the very end of the waist strap and I don't do that anymore because it tends to get janky. But you're going to make your seam about an eighth of an inch into your waistband, catching the front and the back of the waistband and your gathered material in between it. Just take your time and go slow here so that you're making sure that you're catching all of your layers and keeping things as straight as possible. And then once you reach the other end of your skirt, you're gonna go just barely past it, back stitch, and take it off of your machine. Now look at the front and the back and make sure that you have caught everything on both sides. If you haven't, you can put it back under the machine or you can hand stitch any spots that you missed. As you can see, the stitching on the back of my skirt isn't as pretty as on the front, but that's okay. Nobody's going to see it but me. Now make sure that your waist strap is still laying straight. Sometimes it can get a little bit wonky, and this is why I do each side of the strap separately. But we're going to turn this back the same way that we did to the shoulder straps. And I'm going to make a little point on these because I think it looks cuter. So you're going to start at one corner and go diagonally to the middle crease. So you're starting at the folded edge and going to the middle crease and then I'm going to cut off that seam allowance down to about a quarter of an inch. Cut off the little corner. Don't snip your stitching there and turn it back right sides out. You'll still have probably a little bit sticking out there. You can trim that. Then the same way as before, you're going to stitch all the way down that edge. Again, you can use like a 3.5 to a four point stitch length here because this is basically just a top stitch. And repeat this for both sides of the waist ties.
Now I'm going to prep the pocket. So I've got my two pocket pieces and I'm going to place them right sides together. And we're going to stitch around three sides. So you're going to stitch down a seven inch side, across the six inch and back up the seven inch, leaving the other six inch part open. If you wanted to add any lace or anything, you would do that to one side of your pocket pieces before you do this step. Now we're going to turn this inside out or right sides out, right sides out after we clip these little corners. This just helps it turn nicely. So don't go through your stitching, but just trim really close to your stitching on those two corners. Then we're going to turn it right side out and press. Again, you're just going to make friends with your iron during this process and that's fine. It really does help with the finished product. Again, be sure to turn those edges out really nicely. Use a pencil, roll it between your fingers, whatever you need to do to make sure those seams are all the way out. And then you're going to take that open edge that we had and turn it into itself by about a quarter of an inch and give it a good press. This is going to hide all of our raw edges. So we're going to take this over to our machine and we're going to stitch just along that top edge that is still open. This is going to be the top of our pocket. And you want to make this pretty close. So do like an eighth of an inch seam allowance here. Now we're going to decide where we want to place our pockets. So grab both of your pockets and just figure out on your body with your arm length, with your waist length, all of that stuff. Figure out about where you want these pockets to hang and just pin the top middle. Say hi to my kitty, this is Thor. He is the best cat in the entire world and my sewing buddy. Now we're going to place both of those pockets. So smooth everything out because it, it is gathered. So you want to smooth it out and you want to measure down to see about how far you are from the waist strap and how far out you are from the side. My cat is super helpful when I'm filming. <laughs> and you want to make both pockets match the same placement on each side basically. Once you have the pocket where you want it, you're going to pin all the way around the three sides that you're going to stitch. So again, we're gonna leave the top of the pocket open because we wanna be able to put our hands in and you're going to pin all the way down and around the other three sides. So I try to make sure that all of my pins are going the same way because again, you, you will s stab your fingers if you don't. <laughs> I did not give a universal measurement for the pocket placement um, because fabrics gather differently, everyone's waists are different, everyone's arm length is different, and really your pockets are going to be super useful, so just place them where you want them. The biggest thing with this step is to make sure that you're smoothing that skirt out behind it so that you're not getting a bunch of fabric inside your pocket, if that makes sense. So once you have both of those pockets pinned in place, take it over to your machine, back stitch at the top of the pocket several times. This is just going to give you a little bit of sturdiness for you know when your hand is going in and out, in and out multiple times as you're wearing this. You don't want that seam to be weak. And I'm sorry about how dark this particular footage is. Um, my lighting can be kind of weird in my sewing room because I have LED lights and my phone doesn't like my LED lights. I, It's very annoying, but it is what it is. Here you can see those extra back stitches that I did at the top of the pocket. It's just a little bit thicker stitching to help make it sturdy. Now we're going to move on to finishing the bib. Now I'm doing this on my serger. You don't need a serger. This is the only raw edge we're going to have showing, so we do need to finish it. You can just take this to your regular sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch all along the bottom edge. We're just making sure this doesn't unravel at all. Now again, you're going to mark the middle of your skirt and the middle of your bib and match those up. You're going to slide your bib just under your waistband. So we're just hiding about a quarter of an inch basically the width of my surged edge or your zigzag stitch. Just hide that underneath your waistband. And then we're going to run a stitch about an eighth of an inch off of the edge of the waistband all the way down. 
Now, once you take this over to your machine and start sewing it, again, we're going about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the waist strap and just make sure that you are catching the bib all the way down and hiding that edge that we just finished with either our serger or a zigzag stitch. So you can see here, I'm showing you how they overlap. This is just hiding underneath the waist strap there. Now at this point, we are almost done. We just need to put in buttonholes and put on buttons. So what you're gonna do is try this on. Tie it around your waist, put the straps over your shoulders, and I want you to see where you need to put those buttonholes. So cross one strap over to the opposite side like I'm doing here. It can help if you have an extra person, but I didn't. And then mark with a pen or a clip or whatever, mark where you need those buttonholes to be. And this again is gonna be different on every person, so that's why I'm not giving a universal measurement. Then you're going to put your button Inside your button holder, I have an automatic button holder. If you don't, follow the directions for your machine. But for my machine, I put the button in my buttonhole foot and you're going to test how big the buttonhole is going to be. So I'm just on a scrap of my material that I'm using for the apron. This is how big my buttonhole is. So now I know and I can properly place it. My buttonhole always starts at the bottom of the buttonhole and then works backwards to the top and back down. So I'm measuring where I need this to start. This way you don't end up with your buttonhole like running off the edge of your fabric. I've had that happen multiple times. Do that on both sides and then we're gonna add our buttons. So your buttons are going to be added to the front side of your strap. So basically look at your apron from the front and follow the strap all the way down and then add your button where you need it on your strap. Now I've made these with buttons and buttonholes so that it is adjustable. So if you ever lose weight, gain weight, um, you can change the placement of this button to change how much room you have in the top of the apron. This is a feature that I cannot find on commercially available aprons, and I really don't see it on anybody's patterns either, but this is a feature that I really like for myself because when I've tried to just sew the straps into place, I find that they're either too tight or too loose, and I always have to redo them, and I'm trying to save everybody that trouble. We're going to open up our buttonholes now. So you see I put a pen on the end, and this stops the seam ripper from ripping through your buttonhole. So there's your tip for the day. And once that's done, you just put your buttons in your buttonholes and you are officially finished. You have your apron. Here on my mannequin, I don't have the buttons actually in the buttonholes because for some reason on my mannequin, it fits totally different than on my body. And that's why I'm telling you to put it on your body to see where this stuff needs to be placed. Aprons are just finicky that way. The ability to move the buttons also means that if you're giving this as a gift, the recipient can custom fit it to their size and you don't have to worry quite so much about having their exact measurements. Here's one final shot of the full apron. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, I'd love to help.